Hello, hello, hello. Hello, hello, hello. Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Denia Joy. You guys can follow me on Instagram, Twitter, Blab, and here on Periscope at Denia Joy. That's D A N A Y A A Z U R E. Like the Facebook page, Facebook.com forward slash Denia Designs for you. Check out the website, www.denadesignsforyou.com. So I'm here today with World Black History of Periscope. It's the Perry Chain, and we are talking about eight Black Panther Party programs that were more empowering than federal government programs. Man, I'm going to give you guys a couple minutes to join before I start this scope because, oh my goodness, y'all about to have, I swear. Because some of these you guys know, some of them you don't. But the whole situation is the fact of there were some programs that are still active today that the Black Panther Party started that, um... Federal government's kind of kind of trying to take some credit for. So we definitely want to discuss that today. So make sure you guys invite your followers and share, share, share. That's what we do here. It's all about showing love. I want to see those big, beautiful fists pump up. So make sure you guys are pumping out those hearts. Hello, 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 everybody that's joining. Much love, much love, much love. What's good, what's good, what's good? So bump, 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 bump. Really, computer, don't do this to me right now. I'm impatient. I'm the mood. All right. All righty, all righty, all righty. So let's go ahead and get started. The first thing we have is the free breakfast program. Everybody knows about well the Facebook group group is World Black History on Periscope. So make sure you join us on Facebook. That's Facebook.com forward slash World Black History on Periscope. That's World Black History on Periscope. So the first thing we're talking about is the breakfast program. So you guys know about the free breakfast program that we have at, at the different schools, right? So the kids are able to come in, and that's the one meal they don't have to pay for regardless. And so that's the one thing that, that the Black Panthers started. That's actually still active to this day. The misconception about the Black Panthers is that they were anti-police, and that um, they were a hate group, all that kind of stuff. But they were the ones that started, right, right, hold on, wait, hold on. So that they were a hate group and all this kind of stuff. They were thugs, blah, blah, blah. You know, we hear that word a lot, right? So, now, mind you, the Black Panthers were intellectuals. These are doctors, lawyers that were just fed up with what was going on, fed up with the police brutality when it came to African Americans, fed up with us not being treated as human beings. Come on, now. Nah? Let, let's get this together. So, that was one of the first ones, right? So, let's see what's the next guy here. Come on. Bum, ba, da, bum, bum. Um, and this is brought to you by Atlanta Black Star. Make sure you guys are checking that website out. That's www.atlantablackstar.com. Come on, come on, come on. Here we go. Let's see what else we got here. Come on. Ah, so the Youth Institute. <laughs> we had a Black Panther Liberation School. So we had a, school, a institute that was talking about, you know, what the Black Panthers did and what they really were. They weren't anti-police. They were they were pro-justice, pro-black. Yes, baby. Yes. Tell them, please. Tell the people, please. Tell them they wouldn't. Yes. Um, and that's that's the problem. It's about is it spelled on Facebook. Yes, you go to facebook.com forward slash, and then you check out World Black History on Periscope. World Black History on a Periscope, and you would definitely see that. So they had a youth institute. So it was the. Intercommunion Youth Institute was established in January 1971 by the Black Panther Party. In 1974, the name was changed to Oakland Community School. Listen to this. Oakland Community School was founded by the Black Panthers. What? Bet you they didn't tell you that part. So the Black Panther Party a goal was to get children to learn at their highest potential and to strengthen their minds so that one day they would be successful. The school graduated its first class in June 1974. September 1977, um, California Governor Edmund Jerry Brown da, 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 and the California Legislature gave Oakland Community School a special award, having the set of having the set of high standards at the highest level of education in the state. So Oakland, you know that state, that city they're trying to act like is so negative, and you know the kids aren't doing anything, and this and that and the third. Well. <laughs> Back in the day, they had one of the highest standards of education. Who would have thought? Who would have thunk it? Because they sure ain't trying to. They sure not trying to push that right now, are they? They try to put. They try to put us in such a bad light, and it's sad because we are so. 
Oakland has always been, yep. Yes, yes. Uh, Oakland has always been bad about it, for sure, for sure. Always been about educating and showing love. But like I said, you wouldn't know that by watching the media. But don't give me. Oh, hello, L.A. Lewis. So let's see what else we got for him. Mm. People's free ambulance services. People's free. Now, now, anybody has ever been to the hospital, you know how much that bill is. You know that's a $1,500 bill, right? Y'all do know this, right? So, so Black Panther started the free, uh, the People's Free Ambulance Services, right? So the service, uh, the service provided free rapid transportation for the sick and injured people without time-consuming checks into the patient's financial statuses or means. The people, uh, the People's Free Ambulance Service operated with at least one ambulance on a 24-hour emergency basis, and from 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. on a non-emergency or non covalent basis, according to Hillard, right? So people were transported to and from the hospital or to doctor's offices in the modern, comfortable ambulances with courtesy, efficient, and knowledgeable attendants. Now, before I, hold on. Now, before I go on, my thing with this situation is how amazing would this be if you were able to go to the doctor's office, go into the hospital, and not have to worry about how much money it's going to cost you later on. How about the fact that you could possibly get, you know, your wages garnished because you can't pay for the service, right? Empowering. Empowering. People are sitting here in debt. I mean, serious debt because of medical bills. It makes no sense. This is a powerful program that that the Black Panther started. So in case you guys are new here, we're talking about eight, eight programs that the... the Black Panther started that are way more effective than these government programs that are out here now. And a lot of these programs are still in use today. Not this one, obviously, because this didn't make the this didn't make the medical community enough money for it to stick around. But let me let let me not get started on that situation. Um but yeah, the the free lunch program was definitely the one that's the free breakfast program is one that is still around to this day. The Black Panther started that get no credit for, mind you. Really, seriously, not in the mood for this. There we go. Come on, like, like I said, because I didn't, my mom told me, told me that the, that the Black Panther started that, but they are not, it's crazy, ambulance is an emergency situation, but you gotta pay, right, think, man, please, baby, mm-mm-mm, Black Panthers for self-defense, well, uh-oh, uh-oh, somebody might get mad about this, well, it's okay, though, it's alright, make sure you guys are following at World Black History on Periscope, that's at W. R L D B L K H I S T Perby on Periscope. Make sure you guys also join the Facebook group, Facebook.com forward slash groups forward slash World Black History on Periscope. Make sure you guys are following, following, following because this Perry chain oh, I was about to get real. Hold on one second. Let me go ahead and get in. So the Black So the Black Student Alliance founded in May of 1972 where when several Black um black student unions in the Bay are pulled together with the goal of creating concrete programs on the campus that would unify the student body and black students with the black community in order to make the Bay Area colleges better serve and be more responsible to the surrounding and oppressed communities. The Black Student Alliance instituted a program for free books and supplies, for free transportation program, Child care services, a financial aid program, a food program serving um, serving good, nutritious food at reasonable prices, and the in, um at the in, initiation of re- relevant courses, along with the demand for better instructors. Hold on, wait a second. Let me go ahead and stop this right there. So now y'all know anybody that's been to college, whether it be community college, whether it be um, whether it be regular university, you know how much books cost. Y'all know how much books cost. I'm talking about two hundred dollars, three hundred dollars, right? For books. That did, did you see the, the free book? Did you see that part? The free book situation. Did you see the thing where they're talking about free transportation? And you know they are getting us right now <laughs> when it comes to books and transportation as well. You know, so the fact that 
that they actually had a program that was actually providing you with services that you need. It sounds currently in college, and they are twice as much as when you were exactly. Oh, they don't want us to learn. No, 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 can't. No, no, no. We can't have us learning now. Because we know what our history is, but we understand how valuable we are, and therefore we say, um, maybe we shouldn't have to follow your rules, right? That's the thing about it. So, like I said, when, when we learn who we are and what we can do for real, for real, then it becomes a problem. Because then it's like, wait a second, but if I was doing X, Y, Z, then why am I paying all this money? Exactly, it's a weed out system. Education is a privilege. Yes. Education is a right. Mm -hmm. Education should be a right. Last time I checked, education should be a right. But you know, that's just me though. Maybe, maybe I just don't know anything. You know, when it comes to that situation, and I think you know, and that's the the crazy thing about it. So, is this about right? It should be, yeah, because it's, it's a basic human right. There's no reason that we should be going through all this, you know, craziness and whatnot. And with another one, huh? Really. I love when people just want to advertise on my thing. You're not paying attention. Guys. Um, and this is the they had the the Black Panther newspaper. So the paper was uh the official organ of the Black Panther Party. It was a tabloid sized newspaper that was published regu regularly every week. Starting, education is good. Yep, for society, it's a win win. Absolutely, it is a win win. It's supposed to be, but then, but then the more educated you become the more you start asking questions, right? So when you start asking questions, people got to provide answers. And they don't always want to provide the right answers. They just want to provide the answer that, that they've been told was right. They're not going to say, oh, no, you know, this is what really happened. Oh, no, because that makes them look bad. That makes them have to go back and, and think about some things. So, so what's up with the Black Panther newspaper, right? So this was the Black Panther newspaper. Let, let's go through this. The paper was officially the organ of the Black Panther Party. It was a tabloid-sized newspaper that was published regularly every week starting in 1967. It was copyrighted by Huey P. Newton and was 24 pages, distributed nationally. Did anybody know there was a Black Panther newspaper? I didn't know about that. So they killed that pretty quickly, didn't they? The Black Panther, um, the Black Panther provided news and information about the world uh, so the work of Black Panther Party chapters throughout the country, news and news analysis of the bl of the black and other oppressed communities in the United States, Africa, around the world. Yes, Doctor Huey P. Newton. Thank you. Come on, please tell. Yes, tell him he was not no thug. Doctor Huey P. Newton. In case you were not aware, a lot of these people that were in this party were intellectuals intellectuals hello 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 you know it's crazy the paper was a critical part of the movement which is why it's dead now let's be clear this was a net this was a national paper not local baby a national paper that was saying it was what they were doing across the country and all the different chapters you know it's just insane that this that it was it was allowed to get to this point there's so many different things that were going on with this party that people, they try to make them seem to be so horrible. And they're just, you know, such war bad people, whatever the situation may be. I mean, the way that they sat there and they had a fit. Because Beyonce was, yes, they were very intellectual, educated, and wise, right? They had the right to just destroy that. Mm -hmm. The written word for good sense. Exactly. You know, and like I said, the way that, that people reacted to Beyonce's presentation at the Super Bowl because she was showing love to the 50th anniversary of the Black Panther that was appalling. I'm so sorry. But there was something seriously wrong with people when they think that, that that's okay to be that disrespectful to people. Because they're sitting up there and showing love. The people speak pro Hold on, wait. Now, now I know. Now, I know, I know, I know everybody's heard about this one. But I bet you don't know who started it. So, the People's Free Food Program. So, you know, there's all these different food programs that we have out here. For different charities and whatnot. Guess who started that? Bam. Bam. Black Panther. So, hold on. Let me go ahead and pop this back real quick so y'all can go ahead and see the picture. So, you can go ahead and spread this. Spread something. Run tell this, right? So, the People's Free Food Program. 
So all this, all the, oh girl, yeah, you already knew. As soon as I saw it, I was like, wait, let me not just go through it, but actually show people what the real deal is, right? So it says this program provided free food to black and other oppressed people. The intent of the free pro food program was to supplement the groceries of black and poor people until economic conditions allowed them to purchase good food at reasonable prices, according to Hillary. The free food program provided two basic services to the community, an outgoing supply of food to meet their daily needs, and periodic mass distribution of food to reach a larger segment of the community that can be serviced from an ongoing supply. The community was provided the bags of fresh food containing such as eggs, canned fruits, vegetables, chicken, milk, potatoes, rice, bread, cereal, and so forth. Come on now, hold on. And and a, a minimum of week of a week's supply of food was included in each bag. So wait, let me get this straight. You didn't have to go. You didn't have to go to the to the to the office every day to to go after they gave you a week's worth, and they knew what was what was good for you. Really, is that how this went for real? Oh my goodness. But yeah, but but the black heavens are nothing but thugs, right? Come on now, let's quit. Yes, Victoria, Miss Sandoval, Miss High Hill CEO, go ahead and set up some emojis so we know who you are. And we can come follow, 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 queen. Yes, 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 baby. Yes. Come on. Hold on. Wait, we got some, we got some more. Wait, really? Oh, hold on. It's just, it's just crazy that this is what, you know, that, that this is what is going on. It's insanity that people thought that it was okay to demean these people, to demean this group. And they're sitting up there and they were doing all these incredible programs right like where you know but the thing is that we don't know our history so we allowed this yes yeah, so we have victoria ceo on the the sorry high health ceo victoria sandival on the perry train coming up right next come on now gotta love it when things want to be all difficult come on there we go so seniors against a fearful environment Woo! uh-oh hold on it says seniors against a fearful environment called the Safe Foundation. I'm sure y'all heard about this, right? The Safe Foundation. So Safe is a, a nonprofit organi- a corporation that was started by the Black Panther Party at a request of a group of senior citizens for the purpose of preventing muggings and attacks upon the elderly, particularly when they got out of to cash their social security checks or pension checks. Prior to approaching the Black Panther Party. The seniors had gone to Oakland Police Department to request protection. There, the seniors were told that they should walk close to the curb in the future. So, walk close to the curb. Really? Y'all wrong as I'll get out. According to the Black Panther report by David Hillard, who served as the Panther's chief of staff, the program offered transportation and escort services. Yeah, right? Walk close to the curb. Now we're going to protect you, but go ahead, walk close to the curb. You'll be fine. Don't worry about it. You'll be good. <sighs> Anywho, the program offered free transportation and escort services to the residents of the Satellite Seniors Home, a, a residential complex for the elderly in Oakland, California. So Oakland was doing some amazing stuff when it came to the Black Panther Party, when no one would even know that because they've given Oakland such a bad reputation. That's why when you see all these powerful movements coming out of Oakland, that's because they've been doing it for a minute. Oh, yeah, I got one minute left. And then we got Victoria Sandoval going in and doing her thing. Yes, 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 for sure. So this is the one more. Yes, I got one more for you. Okay, so Victoria Sandoval, high health CEO, was going, is going ahead and go set up. So she'll be up in a minute. And we got one more of these guys. And then we can get on get on out of here and get on over to Miss High Health CEO doing her thing. Yes, yes, yes. Yes. Oh, hold on. Wait. We got the body and soul of the Black Panther Party, the fight against discrimination. So, health clinics. Health clinics. Yeah, we all know about health clinics, right? So, the clinics were called People's Free Medical Centers, PFMC, and eventually were established in 13 cities across the country, from Cleveland to New Haven, Connecticut, 
Winston-Salem, North Carolina to Los Angeles. Women, according to the sociologist Alondra Nelson, were the backbone of the effort. Not in spite, um, not, not surprisingly, considering that approximately 60% of Black Panther Party were female. 60, hello, hello, hello. 60% of the Black Panther Party members were female. Didn't know that. Actually, I just, I, I rephrase that. I just learned about that recently. Yes, majority female. So this whole situation of, oh, there are thugs, oh, there are this, oh, there are that. Yeah, it's a lie. 